How do we change battery chemistry on a solar charge controller? Can we use multiple radios with Rumlog NG? And does Chirp kill Yesu radios? This time on Mailbag Monday. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning into Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K at MRD. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. K8MRD at iCloud.com. We've got three really great things to talk about today, so let's dive right in. This first question, this viewer writes, I have a Norsk lithium battery that is a spare from my fishing gear. It's a 20-amp-hour battery. I want to hook it up to my BioNO 60-watt solar panel, good choice, that is connected to a Bouge RV solar controller. That was the only control I could find that would charge a lithium battery. Interesting. There's all kinds of charge controllers that'll do that. Anyway, my question is, do you have any experience with that controller and what settings would you use to charge a lithium battery, not lithium iron phosphate? My next question is, do you or does anyone else have a really good video on how to set up and use MobiLink with WinLink on an Android? I would also like to know of a good video on how to set up and use WinLink on a PC. So I'm going to answer those last questions first. You are talking to the wrong guy. (laughs) I'm going to assume you're new to the channel, uh, so I'll let you in on a little secret. I am full Apple all the way. Uh, While I do have Android and Windows devices, I don't use them. Uh, But... Uh, and I also don't have any experience with MobiLink or WinLink. However, I have two really good friends, Josh over at Ham Radio Crash Course and Jason KM4ACK of KM4ACK on YouTube. Both are kind of in that niche. So I would say go check out their channels and ask them about uh, all Windows and Mac or uh, Android things, although... I don't think either of them really prefer Windows or Android. Um, They would have answers for you, so go check them out. Now, to answer your question about the charge controller, that is very easy. Yes, I have a Bouge RV controller, and let's hop over to the workbench there, and I'll show you how to change the settings. It's very easy. So here we have my Bouge RV solar charge controller. And by using these buttons, we can cycle between different things, so if we press this left button here, let's get back to the beginning here. We can see that's my battery's voltage at 13.1 there. If we push it again, this B05, and you'll notice this little battery icon right there says LFP for lithium iron phosphate, okay? We can also cycle through where it says BAT 12 volts. That's our charging voltage, so we can set, we know if it's a 12 volt system or a 24 volt system. Here's what it's actually going to charge to, and then there's the temperature. So the way you're gonna select what kind of battery chemistry you're using, we're gonna go to this B05, and then I'm gonna long press this left button here until it's blinking. Now we can use, these are kind of right and left arrows. Now see how that says LI? That is lithium. So then you long press, and we can cycle through here. We've got lithium titanate. We've got uh, SEL, I'm not sure what that is. We've got AGM, gel, uh, flooded lead acid, lithium iron phosphate, and back to lithium. So then we're gonna long press the right button to select a lithium ion battery. Now it's not blinking, we've selected that. So let's click this left button again. Notice it's on 12 volts. If we long press the left button, that'll start blinking and that's where we can change if it's either a 12 volt or a 24 volt system. We probably want 12 volts in your case, I would imagine. So we'll leave it at that. We'll hit this left button again. Here's where you're gonna set your charging voltage. Now I assume because uh, you have a three cell lithium ion battery, you're gonna wanna charge it to 12.6. If it's not at 12.6, long press the left button and you can use the right or left buttons to set your charging voltage, which should be 12.6. And then we're gonna long press the right button here. And that should be all you need to do. And you should be set up now to charge your lithium ion battery with the charge controller. So there you go. I hope that answers your question and happy charging with solar. Thanks for writing in, I appreciate it. 
Next, we have a question about my absolute favorite logging software on a Mac. It is called Rumlog NG, and it is free, and it is awesome. This viewer writes, uh, this comes from the YouTube comments, uh, from Jay Bammy. Mike, thanks for all your efforts you put into these videos. I'm trying to figure out if Rumlog NG supports multiple profiles. I have multiple radios which self-respecting ham does not. I like your style. And I want Rumlog NG to connect to any of them with identical setting except the radio setting being different and hence profiles. Have you seen any way to set this up? I am continuing to try and figure this out. So yes, there is a way. It's actually quite easy. Now, uh, I've only found a way to get it to work for two transceivers but I'm gonna show you how, and it's stupid easy. So let's hop over to Rumlog NG. So here we can see I have uh, at the bottom of the screen a Yaesu 818, and we also have the screen from my ICOM 7610. Now here is Rumlog NG, and we're gonna go up to uh, settings here, and right here TX1 and TX2 are our tabs of interest. Now I've already got the ICOM set up, and we have use cat uh, checked. Now I have a full video on how to uh, set up Rumlog NG uh, that you can check out. So I'm not going to go too much in detail. This is just about the transceivers. So transceiver two, if we check that, I've simply selected Yesu, and while I'm using an 818, the 817 ND function works as well. You have to pick your serial port, and I'm going to select use cat on that as well and hit close. Now the 818 did just click and you'll notice nothing really happened. So if we change, let's just say I'm gonna click on the uh, spotting network here, we can see that the 7610 is changing frequencies, okay? Now you could go into settings and turn off cat for whichever radio you don't wanna use. So let's say I wanna use the 818, I can turn off cat on the 7610, hit close, and theoretically, the 818 is now changing frequencies. But that's kind of cumbersome, and I don't wanna do it that way. So would you believe if we turn both of these cat controls on, you've got control of both radios, close that, if we widen this window, watch what happens. A little bit more. Now we get both transceivers. Look at that. Isn't that neat? We might be able to shorten it a little bit. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a way to configure this that I'm aware of without widening this window. But now I can select transceiver one. Notice this is green and this is yellow. So if I change to 28380, that just happened on the 7610. Now, if I choose transmitter two, say I want to go to 14255, that just changed on the 818. But wait, there's more. If we go to auto toggle, turn this on, okay? Transmitter two, which is the 818, is selected. But I'm going to turn the VFO on the 7610 and look what happens. It just automatically switched to the 7610. Now I'm going to grab the VFO of the 818. Now it's tracking the frequencies of the 818 and it is automatically switched to the 818. So we can just select here, select there. We're changing frequencies just like that. And again, if I grab the VFO for the 7610, we'll select this and it is changing the VFO for the 7610. Multiple transceivers with one logging software. So how freaking cool is that? And again, Rumlog NG is free. I would highly recommend donating to him. I know I sure did because I absolutely love his software. And hopefully that helps you out. Again, it looks like it's only for two transceivers. So if you got three, you're out of luck. But at least we have two. And now you know the rest of the story. Lastly, we've got a question about Chirp and Yesu radios. 
This viewer writes, Hi Mike, I'd like a strongly opinionated statement from you on whether Chirp is safe to use on Yesu radios. I've heard rumors for years that Chirp should not be used on Yesu radios because it doesn't properly address certain blocks of the Yesu memory and can result in corruption or even bricking Yesu radios. Personally, I think this is a deliberate hogwash planted by RT Systems and Yesu because Chirp is open source and undercuts those companies' revenue from selling proprietary cables and software. I wouldn't put it past them. I've always gravitated toward Chirp because I formerly used Linux, now suffering on Windows, but maybe get a MacBook at some point. You should get a MacBook. I am recording all of this on Mac. Uh, and Chirp is not only open source, but it works on all different operating systems. The reason I'm asking about this is that recently my FT817ND started having problems with cat control with my ATU. Sometimes it would probably properly switch the PKT for a tune, but not transmit. Other times it would transmit but not change mode. I initially chalked this up to a defective ATU and tried a different brand, but had the same result. I also noticed that the band stack would be messed up afterwards. Hmm. Where I used to be able to switch up and down through 160, 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, etc., it would lose the higher bands and would do something like 160, 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 12, 20, 15. That is weird. I'm beginning to wonder if this was caused by Chirp or Chirp Next. I can't precisely correlate when I last used Chirp to when I first noticed the 817's issues. I know correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation, but this seems suspect to me. Should I consider paying $50 for RT system software and cable? Do you think factory resetting the radio and using RT to reprogram the radio would help? Or do you think the damage is already done? Or do you think Chirp and these issues are unrelated but coincidental? Please share your thoughts and be gentle if I made any grammar errors in my email. Thanks, Greg, K-8-K-E-T. Greg must be from Ohio. Greg, I didn't have any problems reading your email. Although I'm not a big fan of double spacing every sentence. So there you are. So there's a lot to unpack there. And one of the first things I might suggest is having some chokes on power cables, feed line. That might be something that's causing issues with your tuner. Those, even if it worked before and doesn't work now, that's how my life goes. <laughs> so you might want to try that. Now, I have many Yesu radios. And I have programmed, I can only speak for two of them programming on Chirp. One is the Yaesu VX7R, and the other is my Yaesu 818. I have had no problems whatsoever with Chirp. So I would say, this is me personally, I would do anything and everything I could before spending the money for RT systems when there's perfectly fine stuff that works out there. So right now, my Yesu 818 is plugged into my computer for cat control and programming and everything. I am using a DigiRig. I did a video on DigiRig on how to make that happen and program it with Chirp with the 818, and I will put a link right up in the description. But let's hop over to Chirp. Before we do that, though, I want to show you what my radio is doing right now. Everything is fine, um, and then we'll hop over to Chirp. So let's take a look. So here we can see my Yaesu 818. We're on 160 meters. I'm just pushing the, the up and down button. Now we're on 80 meters. There's 60 meters. There's 40 meters. There's 30 meters. 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, 6. Then we get the FM uh, broadcast, your AM air bands, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And then back down to 160 meters. So let's read from the radio. Now, the, now one thing you might want to look at when you're selecting which radio, there are two versions of the 817 and the 818. There's an ND and there's an ND US. So if you're in the US, you want to make sure, or if you have a US version of this radio, you want to make sure you're using that. I'm using an 818 ND, so I'm going to click 818 ND US. Then we're going to hit OK, and it's going to tell us we got to turn the radio off, press and hold the mode keys while turning on the radio. Now we're in clone mode, we're gonna hit OK, and then we're gonna hit the A button, and it is now reading. So there, there we are, here's all the frequencies I have in here, but let's just say we wanna put in 146520 and call that FM simplex, whatever, who cares? Uh, and that's all I need to do, okay? So just a quick demo here, and we're gonna upload it to the radio, and we gotta turn the radio off. Hold down the mode buttons again. Uh, and then press C. 
and then hit OK. And now we're writing to the radio. Done and done. So now we can turn the radio off. We'll turn it back on again. And let's go through our band stack. We've got 160, 80, 60, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, 6. There's our FM broadcast, our AM air, 2 meter and 70 centimeters, and back to 160 again. So if I hit the VM button, we're going to go to our memories, if I remember how to do that. And we just put in 14652, which is around here somewhere. FM simplex, there it is. Everything works fine. And then it's got the six meter channels in there, or the six, whatever the heck it is, 60 meters. So I'm kind of interested what you got going on. And guys, that is the wrong camera. Have you heard this? Does does Chirp kill Yesu radios? Like I said, I've only used it on the 818 and the uh, VX7R because I don't have a programming cable for Chirp for my FT5 or my, uh, what the heck is it, the FT4XR. So what are your experiences? Have you guys heard of this happening? Do you have solutions? If so, put them in the comments so we can help this guy out. Uh, but I, I would give a factory reset and try that US version um, before spending the money on RT systems. Not that there's anything wrong with RT systems. We're just hams and we're cheap. So that's all I got. So, hey guys, if you have questions for me, shoot me an email, k at mrd at icloud.com. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Mike K at MRD. This is Ham Radio Tube 73, y'all.